What do you think of Ben? Strikes me as a typical career officer. Seems like a hard nose, but with decent instincts. Mm. What about Applegate? <laughs> Might be a closet liberal. Hello. Matt Levitch. Yeah? Ah, uh, they're coming to get you, Matt Levitch. Who is this? Gonna do to you, Matt Levitch. Gonna cut out your tongue. Put lie in your eyes. You okay, Matt? I'm not sure I'm fine. We're almost there. April 27, 1976, the Secretary of the Air Force in a memorandum regarding the Matlovich case stated the following in part. From the inception of the Air Force to the present day, it has always been the policy to discharge practicing homosexuals. Their presence would seriously undermine the integrity of the system of rank and command, as well as raise, under certain circumstances, the possibility of security breaches based on blackmail. The military forces constitute a specialized community governed by a separate code of discipline from that found in the civilian community. It is my opinion, shared by all my senior advisors, that the vast majority of Air Force members today would not have the necessary respect for or confidence in a military member known to be a homosexual. Without such respect and confidence, the effective discipline and morale necessary for mission accomplishment simply cannot be maintained. Hey, it's good to see you guys. Hi, Matt. This is Susan Human. Hello. Hello. David Adelson, nice my attorneys. We tried to get into the hearing. But my PTA credentials didn't work. <laughs> Listen, whatever happens, we're with you all the way, you understand? Oh, thanks, man. I know that, and I appreciate your support. If you want to talk, come on over. Anytime. Anytime. We're what are you going to do? Nice meeting. Nice meeting. Excuse us. This board is convened at 0900 hours on the 16th of September, 1975, at Langley Air Force Base, Virginia. Is the respondent, Technical Sergeant Leonard P. Matlovich, present? I am. Will counsel please state how the respondent is to be represented? Yes, sir. Uh, my name is David Adelston. I'm a member of the bars of the state of South Carolina and the District of Columbia. I will be the chief counsel. My co-counsels are Susan Human, a member of the bar of the District of Columbia, and Captain Larson Jenicky, a member of the bar of the state of New York. As legal advisor, it will be my duty to rule on the admissibility of evidence and all procedural matters. Lieutenant Colonel Applegate, as recorder, is the government's representative. Will the recorder please read the convening order? 
This board is convened for the purpose of determining whether the respondent technical sergeant Leonard P. Matlovich, under provisions of Air Force Manual 3912, should be discharged from the United States Air Force because of homosexuality. First, the government will present evidence to support its allegations. Before we begin that presentation, however, Mr. Adelston has asked to voir dire each member of the board out of hearing of the other voting members. The purpose of this voir dire is to determine your ability to hear this case fairly and impartially. I suggest we begin with a junior member, Major Holloway. Gentlemen, the rest of you are excused. Major, will you please take the stand? Ladies and gentlemen, before we start this voir dire, I'd like to remind you this is an Air Force hearing, not a civilian court. There will be no cameras or other recording devices, and you will maintain proper decorum at all times. Interviews with Sergeant Matlovich or his thought attorneys. About it and thought about it. But you can only hurt yourself. What about your father and me? And what about your sister and her kids? What do you think this is going to do to them? To all of us, Lenny. A thing like this is going to change all our lives, you know. Mom, I've tried to make you happy all my life. Now I've got to be myself. Which just may be selfish. If being true to myself is selfish, then I'm... Leonard... You know, all of us are... tempted. One way or another. But that doesn't mean you have to give in to it. Now, I want you to go to church and pray. Get counseling from the priests. Maybe with God's help. Maybe with God's help, I'll finally have the strength to be who I am and what I am. I know you're a good boy. When are you going to tell your father? Well, I'd hoped you'd tell him. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, no, this, uh-uh. Mom. No, 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 Leonard. This is your responsibility, not mine. You see, if what you're doing was right, you wouldn't be ashamed to tell your father. I'm not ashamed. It's just that it's so hard to. I'm not ready to face him. No, you can't face him and tell him what you are because you know how proud that man is of you. Now, Major, I'm not intending to embarrass you, sir, or to intrude on your privacy. Do you feel that homosexuality or homosexuals are immoral? I believe I would have to answer that affirmatively. Do you think that homosexuality is an illness? Possibly. Sergeant Matlovich is a confirmed homosexual. The evidence will show that. Could you vote to retain a homosexual in the Air Force? No, I don't believe that homosexuality Well, uh, let me put it another way, Major. If the evidence indicated that there was an exception to the Air Force regulations with respect to this homosexual, could you uh, consider that? Well, if it's provided for... Well, sir, my understanding is that the legal advisor will instruct the board that there is an exception to the policy. Now, could you follow that instruction? Yes. So then you could conceivably vote to retain a homosexual in the Air Force. <clears throat> well, I have some... Uh, difficulty discussing things uh, in general terms, hypothetically, which is what you're asking me to do, and I'm having some difficulty answering on, on, <coughs> under those conditions. Thank you, Major. Now, Major Bradley, do you have any preconceived notions about the typical homosexual? At one time, I believe they had certain characteristics fell into a kind of stereotype, but I don't believe that way anymore. Do you think homosexuals are more likely to break under pressure than heterosexuals? No. No, I don't think so. Now, this case has received a lot of publicity, Colonel Grant. So has the subject of homosexuality. Have you read any of this, seen any of it? Nothing. Have you had a declared homosexual in your squadron? Do you think this would impair morale? Well, I think it would affect how the other man operated. Oh, wouldn't it depend on the individual homosexual? No. 
It would depend on the fact that it was known he was homosexual. Uh, Colonel McLean, what is your religious background, sir? Lutheran. Were you taught anything about homosexuality in your religious training? Mm, not that I recall. Now, the Air Force regulation uses the term moral in discussing homosexuality. Now, do you think that homosexuality in itself is immoral? Well, I never thought about it. But do you see a conflict between a man's being moral, religious, and his being a homosexual? I couldn't say. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Good night, Mom. Pop. I'll bring her home right after the movie, Mr. Sheen. All right, just drive carefully, Leonard. There's too many kids out drinking tonight. Sergeant Matlovich here and say maybe he's the exception? Possibly. You do have some reluctance? I still have to go back to the regulations. Thank you, Colonel. Uh, Colonel Pryor, since that finishes the voir dire, you may tell the other voting members they are excused to reconvene at 1300 hours. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Adelstone? Do you intend to challenge any of the board for cause? No, Your Honor, we will not challenge for cause. Nor will the government at this time. Your Honor, we move to dismiss on the grounds that the regulation which authorizes this hearing is unconstitutional. AFM 3912, which presumes the discharge of all homosexuals, regardless of any connection between homosexuality and job effectiveness, violates the right to privacy and equal protection of the laws guaranteed by the First, Fifth, and Ninth Amendments to the Constitution. In the past 10 years, the Supreme Court has made it very clear that the right to privacy is the right to be free of government intrusion into matters fundamentally affecting the private lives of our citizens, private consenting adults. To deny a citizen government employment solely because he is homosexual is precisely the kind of arbitrary conduct prohibited by the Due Process Clause of the Fifth Amendment. On July 3rd of this year, the Civil Service Commission issued guidelines that an employee may not be dismissed solely on the basis of homosexual conduct. Why should equal protection be denied Leonard Matlovich working side by side with gay civilians? Since this hearing is based on a regulation which violates the respondent's constitutional rights, we move that you, the legal advisor, recommend to the Board of Review that these proceedings be dismissed. It is my opinion that this board does not have authority to pass on constitutional questions and is bound by mandates of Air Force regulations. Your motion to dismiss on unconstitutional grounds is denied and will not be referred to the board. We will recess for lunch. Maybe it's Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> no, look at this. <laughs> well, what do you think we did? 
That's pretty much what I expected. What did you think, Matt? Well, it all seemed routine. Everybody was going through the motions, saying what had to be said. Is anybody really listening? I think the voir dire gave us a pretty good picture of the voting board. An awful lot of hedging. Homosexuals try and recruit straights, possibly, maybe. Homosexuals impair morale, I don't know, could be. Straight, come out with a straight yes or no. Mm. For the moment, I think we have to go with the idea that at least three of those five guys really are uncertain. Could be reached, turned around. Attitudes can be changed, I'll testify to that. <laughs> Matt, wipe your mustache. <laughs> State your name and rank, please. Sergeant Thomas W. Gilmore. In what capacity did you know Sergeant Matlovich? I met him in 1971. He was uh, NCO in charge of the electric shop. Did you form any judgment as to Sergeant Matlovich's sexuality? Speculation, yes. What was that speculation? I thought he was homosexual. What made you think that? Various mannerisms. How about his choice of drinking establishments? Objection, Your Honor. He's leading the witness. I'll rephrase. On what basis did you form that opinion? Well, he talked a lot about equality for homosexuals. Anything else? He frequently visited gay bars. Frequently. OK. I'll pass the witness. Sergeant Gilmore. Are you and Sergeant Matlovich good friends? Yes, sir. Has his open declaration of homosexuality affected your relationship? No, sir. He was your uh, non-commissioned officer in charge at Hurlburt. Yes, sir. What opinion do you have of his ability as a race relations instructor? I think he's one of the best. Why do you have that opinion? Matt? Hmm. Well, he didn't learn what he knows out of books. He's been on the other side. Like, once he told me that he could have taught a course on how to be prejudiced, he was a real brown shoe, a hard nose, especially about black people. You know, we see each other every day, and I, I thought it would be a good idea if we got to know each other better. Well, I'm glad you kept asking. What? I don't know. I, I guess I was curious. You're very different from any Negro I've ever met before. <laughs> How's that? Well, uh, the way you talk, the way you dress, having been to college. You've just been playing in a different league, that's all. I mean, I always thought that I was better than any Negro I'd ever met before. But I've never been to college. I've never lived in a house like this. I mean, I've... I believe all that stuff about Negro inferiority. And I always thought you Southerners were inferior to us. Huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, my friends. Absolutely the last go round before dinner, or believe me, it won't be worth eating. <laughs> One orange juice, fresh squeeze, no vodka. And two bourbons with branch water for us degenerate drinkers. What were you two laughing about? <laughs> well, I was just telling him that I always thought they were inferior to us beautiful blacks. What's so funny about that? Well, he thought we were inferior to them. <laughs> oh, <laughs> now that's funny. <laughs> hey, what is this anyway? A dinner party or a consciousness-raising session? But you have to admit, you are different. Not from the people we know. That's all I ever wanted to do would be was to serve my country in the Air Force. I tried living outside once, but uh, it didn't work. I'd find myself living close to the sound of airplanes so I could get to sleep at night. <laughs> oh, the Air Force is all I want in life. I like it. Amy finds it limited. It's, it's not that I find it limited socially. That's not what I mean. 
What do you mean? Oh, I don't know. There are things that I need. Things that are not to be found. Well, uh, I'm trying to work that out. I hope you do. Sergeant Murata. How'd you come to know Sergeant Mantlovich? He was the non-com in charge of my section. What was your opinion of him as your NCOIC? I've known 20 different instructors. He was absolutely the best. Do you feel his uh, ability as an instructor was impaired by his admitted homosexuality? No, sir. I think he'd be better than ever. Why would you say that? Because now he won't have to live in a shadow or behind a facade that something he's not. Come my my tới dùng. Dạ tới. Hey, you're doing pretty well there, Matt. Hey, you know, Matt, there's a girl at Madame Ty's who really got the hots for you. They call her Snow White. I think you ought to check her out. How come I haven't seen you down there? Are you writing your memoirs? A weekly letter to the wife. Yeah, he mails him just before he goes to spend the weekend with Kitty or Tina. Or you. Hey, listen. All the best banks have more than one branch. Come on. Yeah, now don't be afraid. Nobody's gonna hurt you. Hey, buddies, look what I bring home. Hey, Lindsay, what are you doing? Wait a minute, man. You can't bring them in here. Well, take her easy, partner. There's plenty enough to go around. What if somebody reports it? Now, who's gonna report us? I'm going to report it. Oh, come on now, Matt. There's one for you, and there's one for me. Come on now, gals. Oh, this will be a day to remember. They're too young, man. Well, maybe you want a mama son. Maybe you want a... Hey, 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 come on, hey. Come on now. Almighty God bless you, and the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You are not yourself today, Matt. Something troubles you. Well, people just don't behave the way you expect them to. Come, walk with me. <clears throat> you are disappointed in someone? In myself. So? Well... Something happened today, and I don't like the way I handled it. Did you have a decision? Did you have a choice? Well, God says we have a free will. God wasn't talking about armies. Perhaps you are uh, too demanding of yourself. Do you want to tell me? Well, I guess it's okay. It's just one of the sergeants I room with bought a couple of... Vietnamese girls into the hooch. And... and what? Well, it's against regulations, and I didn't do anything to stop it. But what could you have done? I could have reported it. But that wouldn't stop it. You could make more trouble for yourself than the good that would come of it. Do you really think so? Oh, yes. Now, tell me. 
What is it that really troubles you? What do you mean? Well, are you troubled uh, that a man breaks a regulation? Or something else? Well, I mean, I... I just hate the way they treat those girls as if they were property or something. Do you hate the way they treat them? Or what they do with them? Wasn't that the same thing? No. It is not. Send it back. Jason, you're just hungry. No, I'm gonna do a recon. Dig the one with the long hair. Ah, new girls in town? I don't remember seeing your bright and shiny faces before. Oh, well, we usually hang out at Cinderella's, but it's dead tonight. Well, we'll remedy that. Drink? We only drink champagne. What a coincidence. So do I. Un botille de champagne, s'il vous plaît? Moet and Chandon. Well, what's your names? I'm Birgit. Birgit. It's Swedish. Uh oh. This is Jean. Oh, hi. Hi, how are you? I'm Jason. <laughs> and uh, that's my buddy. Matt? Matt. He's cute. He's yours. <laughs> ah. ah. Hey, just like New Year's Eve. When you're with me, every night's like New Year's. Hi. Hi. <laughs> oh! <laughs> this little piggy went to market. And this little piggy had some. And this little piggy had champagne. And uh, this little piggy had none. Are you gonna stick with the orange drink all night? Uh, I don't uh, drink alcohol. Oh, are you a health freak? Uh, no, I just don't like the taste. Uh, where you girls work? We work over at Nuts. Uh, what agency is that? Oh, that's our motto, never underestimate the service. It's a public relations mission. Well, here's to private relations. Here's to you. Mm. Uh, you girls uh, room together, do you? Yeah, we have an apartment over at To-Do Street. To-Do Street, very nice. Oh, it's near everything, so we can stay out late and still make the curfew. Which is pretty soon. Shall we take the bottle? Sure. Well, let's carry on. Count me out. I'm sorry, I, I don't feel well. Um, just a minute, girls. I'll be right back. Must be something he ate. I hope so. <laughs> What's the matter with you? We've got two live ones here. I don't feel well. You were all right before. Well, I'm not all right now. Well, what's with you? You're just going to mess up everything. You can take on the two of them. I'm doing you a favor. That's not the point. Come on. Jean likes you. She's only so. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint her. That's It's me you're going to disappoint, and I'm the guy that's spraying for the champagne. Okay, I'll pay you for it. That's not the point. You're going to mess up everything, and I dig that beer. Now, come on. They're not going to wait all night. Look, Jason, I just don't run around the way you oh. do. I have to feel something for the person. Don't give me that. There's something else. There's nothing else. I just wasn't brought up the way you were. Okay, right. try it. Just for me, okay? Okay, man. Well, that's my boy. Come on! <laughs> 